let's talk about the economics of automation for AI. With massive compute and GPU cost, how does automation impact the total cost of ownership or ROI for organizations who are deploying large AI models? Boy, I, I love this question because there's so many dimensions of cost here. Um, and the simplest one is just faster time to value. It's, it's can you keep the machines up? Can you keep them patched? Can you keep them running? Can you do a reset faster? There, there's a, a lot of just using the gear more effectively because cost in an AI infrastructure is actually lost opportunity. Opportunity cost is a much more significant part of AI costs than the infrastructure costs. That's why people are willing to spend so much money buying these servers. And it's also worth noting that one of the things that we've demonstrated over and over again is the ability to be vendor agnostic, to be heterogeneous about which vendors are being supported and how they're being supported. So we see very much that our customers switch Oh, hardware OEMs. They might buy Supermicro because they have an advantage and then switch to Dell or HP, Lenovo, um, Cisco. All right. It, the ability to swap vendors in and out, but depending on cap capability of the gear, but also cost differential from a negotiation perspective is dramatic in how these systems go. And we're seeing uh, in market tremendous pressure on um, alternatives to NVIDIA. And so the ability to mix in Ethernet and uh, so Rock E or NVIDIA InfiniBand, mix those different types of network topologies, mix your training infrastructure, right? So NVIDIA or AMD processors, being able to be heterogeneous in that is absolutely essential in market. And there is no single bigger driver of cost savings as being able to have a competitive infrastructure. And so what we're seeing right now and we're helping customers do is not just build the traditional NVIDIA uh, footprints, and but we're starting to see this trend line of investigating uh, Ethernet as an alternative, AMD as an alternative, right? Those are incredibly powerful drivers. Um, a cost and frankly, availability of infrastructure. When companies start building or start scaling their AI infrastructure, what should they be thinking about from day one? Yeah, we, we unfortunately see a lot of customers who are very hesitant to jump in because they're worried about buying the right thing. You're spending so much money that you know, the concern of, did I buy the right machine? Is it going to be you know aged out or the you know, last generation even before I bought it? What we really, really strongly suggest customers do is worry less about what they're buying and more about their AI, their their configuration, their automation their pieces and how they're doing it. What I have seen is really sad is we've seen customers who buy a certain amount of AI gear and then spend a lot of time manually setting it up and configuring it and trying to make it work. Um, we see the similar thing in people trying to leave Broadcom and, and, and having to go through this learning process. If you start the learning process by hand, figuring you have to learn how to do all of these operations, you're really wasting a lot of time. That's not the important thing, right? It, it, we really help customers get running much faster. You know, so they're already doing cluster builds, repeated cluster builds. That type of apply, rinse, repeat cycle is much more important than trying to figure out how your drivers work in these different uh, integrations. And, and customers lose a lot of time trying to figure that out. And the simple reality here is by the time they figured out how to do it with one thing, it's going to have changed. That is not valuable knowledge to accumulate. It's just moving so quickly. What really helps is you want to build processes that are fast, resilient, and iterative, and then be able to move through your learning cycles much, much faster. So you have to build that at the beginning of this cycle, and then that will make you more confident that you know, you're never going to buy exactly the right thing, but that what you buy, you can change and pivot it and adapt. Um, that's, that's really the only secret for moving more quickly in AI. And if I ask you from a very, very strategic point of view, is it about hardware, hardware abstraction, automation frameworks, multi-cloud considerations? What are the considerations they should have in mind before they get started? Yeah, there aren't a lot of abstraction frameworks that you can use from an AI perspective. We're, we're starting to see some good um, inferencing platforms come in that are cross-machine, right? We're using Kubernetes already, and people should be familiar with that, although we're using it differently. We're thinking of Kubernetes you know, from an infrastructure perspective rather than a cloud perspective. But, but fundamentally, those are, are sort of you know things you have to work through and learn. It's It's just part of the challenge.